Welcome guys, and we're going to be talking about alliance skills today. I'm going to go through all six new alliance skills in the game and give you my opinions on them and what could be problematic in the future for Gold Dragon. So let's get into this juicy topic of the new feature added in. Hello guys, yes, smash like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneak in the one and only. And we're covering obviously Call of Dragons like always on the channel. And basically we're going over these alliance skills because these have just come into the game which you guys should have known from the last patch. And obviously all the alliances have the ability to use them right now. So you can see what all of these are. We're going to go through each one and obviously I'll give you my take, right? So the first one is obviously nice and simple, fully loaded, right? So this is going to increase all the members gathering speed and then obviously grants additional resources once gathering is complete so this could actually be really really powerful right i don't know if this is going to work with the alliance pit and if we go into the information here all it's going to showcase is this gathering bonus speed we don't know what the additional um resources are so that'll be interesting to see in the future with the resource pit right if it works with that it'd be really good if not what you're basically trying to do with this is pretty simple. When you are in that farming phase, right, and you're really heavily farming, it's actually really good if your alliance maybe has a timed marker or event where you just log in, this is going to come on, and you know all of your gathering is going to be increased for that amount of time. It's going to help you out, honestly, grow. And obviously in the home kingdoms, right, the brand new feature is going to come into the end of the season. This is going to be massive, right? Being able to put this on as often as possible in the home kingdom is going to allow you as a player to develop. So this is a very important skill that your alliance officers and a good alliance needs to be taken care of, right? So that's the first one, fully loaded, nice and easy. And now we're going into buildings, right? Buildings and battlefields. So this one is very interesting, right? Because it's increasing the alliance members' hero XP earned by defeating Darklings and it's increasing build speed for alliance buildings. So this is actually two different, you know, buffs put into one that could be used in different areas right so obviously in the early game phase when you just drop into the zone this is going to be really good if you can get this unlocked as fast as possible it will let you basically just set up your zone one really really well and that early game hero xp bonus right it's going to let everyone actually level up their heroes quicker again with the new addition to that's coming into the new patch where they have reduced i believe the XP needed for these heroes as they go on for you know future seasons. So we're gonna see how that plays out too. But when we come into the alliance building max, you know, speed, this is interesting, right? Because you can use this as an offensive tool, right? You go into a brand new zone. If you have this fully ready, you guys can basically power speed all the way, you know, through certain zones and basically, you know, get an advantage over your opponents right and again maybe you hit a stalemate and eventually after a war you know the back and forth you start to you know break through their defense right because maybe you've won the war of attrition this would be perfect again to just to try and capitalize on how many flags an alliance could basically push back the enemy so this is going to be really interesting to see and i think for the future of the game it's going to be really really you know impressive to watch over you know long periods of time when we're watching zone fights stone guard is actually another simple one it's actually nothing too crazy everyone's just going to get a bunch of mark speed and attack so as you can imagine this should be used during any of your wars right i'm not going to go too crazy about this but if we go into the you know percentages you can see it goes two four six eight and then ten percent which is really really nice the four hour duration so once it's going you know you're gonna be fine for four hours with really good benefits if you're looking again because i did kind of miss it on the building boys you're gonna have three and twenty percent but this is what's so powerful about this you're getting 30 percent hero xp bonus but 500 percent max speeds for that one hour this is a very powerful buff and that's why it's got a 72 hour cooldown on it right so really really good on those top three right and if we just go to fully loaded because we did cover it already and just to show you guys it is a 12 hour cooldown just to make sure you know if you missed it when i did pop it up in the first time we've got it there right so vitality boost oh now this one is interesting right because we're gaining 60 at max level 60 stamina recovery 
for our heroes and our war pets. So this is going to basically allow mostly, I would say, most T5 players with a big amount of troops, when this is activated, to get some insane uptime on their heroes, right? Because don't get me wrong, this is going to benefit everyone, right? You are going to be able to fight. But this is honestly more beneficial to players with a massive amount of troops. Because if you've got a bunch of troops in the game, the major issue you normally fall into is stamina. And that's why you kind of see sometimes the whales kind of just putting out any two heroes with their T5, because they know, to be honest, their T5 is going to do more damage against those T4 players that still hit it, which is a sad reality, right? So this is going to be, again, I'm interested, maybe it gets nerfed, but obviously this isn't too crazy as a skill. But now here's the interesting one. This is probably what you guys have all been waiting for, the Fog of War, right? So Fog of War is a insane skill, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it because this has some crazy utility that one of my uh, commentators uh, did state, and I wanna say a big shout out to Devis here because he did say this, and it was kinda on my mind, but I didn't really think of it until he actually just put it into reality, right? So this whole fog of war summons a mysterious fog on the battlefield, right? And when the friendly legions are inside the fog of war, they are immune to all ranged damage, right? Really, really sick. And this is at level two, it's a six minute duration. Guys, it's a 30 minute fog at level 10. And that is insane with a two day cooldown, right? So this is a monstrous buff. And where this comes into scary reality is the applications of this, right? Because obviously this is a area and we've seen it, it's nothing small and it's not massive either. It's actually a decently, you know, actually fair game in size, let's just be honest, right? When it comes to the, the template size. But what's really powerful is the fact that this is an alliance skill and in the future, as we guys know, warbands are introduced into the game. Meaning, if you have three or four alliances in a warband and you are fighting and teleporting across the maps, right, in these insane zones to, you know, fight for control, what happens if two or three of those alliances just fog an entire area. I'm just saying, right? It is going to be terrifying. As well as that, this could honestly be, and it might be, you know, scary to say this on my channel, but fuck it, I'm going to say it. Cavalry. Cavalry might be insane right now. Who knows? Because you've just got to think, the problem with cavalry generally is they can get into combat quite easily, right? They can get in and they can do some insane damage when they get that damage off, right? With their unyielding rush. Now, you're able to do that and you're not taking any ranged damage, meaning the enemy's infantry really do need to target those cavalry units. Otherwise, a cavalry unit inside a fog of war could just run rampage, right? It could just keep going and going, which is very, very scary, because then it can obviously get to the edge of the fog of war and escape, hopefully, more safely. So this fog of war is gonna be very interesting. You can see already two applications right there, and I don't wanna give any more secret tips and tricks of some more applications, because there is a ton of them, and I would love to actually hear your comments, right? And maybe we might make a follow-up video on the Fog of War specifically, and just include your comments and suggestions on what you would love to see potentially be used for, and I'll give my opinion on it, right, and review those comments, right? So this is easily the, the big alliance skill of the whole patch. But then we've got the nice, you know, I would call it the World of Warcraft um, dungeon layer, you know, finder, right? We've got layer teleportation boys. So now you're able to basically use your like summoning stone, from WoW and uh, basically teleport your members directly to the lair, which is really, really cool. So this is going to be interesting to see where you're creating these, you know, portals, allowing members to jump in. It's just a quality of life change, right? It's just a quality of life change that's going to allow players just to get to those behemoths a little bit sooner instead of waiting all that time. It does honestly help when you die, right, and you need to reset. Maybe if you're going for a number one run or like, you know, maybe a really fast speed run and you want to get that, you know, quick reset, you can do use this teleportation at least once maybe. 
who knows but it's it's good right nice quality of life buff i think everyone's actually really happy about this they're not you know screwing around from there right so those are the six new alliance skills so i hope you guys have enjoyed it and obviously with this patch which is another little thing that if you've not noticed in the top corner here the prestige you should be getting more prestige. This is like to end the video up. It's not an alliance skill, but right now it is in the game. If you've not noticed, you are getting a ton of prestige due to the new patch too. So just take advantage of it, guys, and just start completing those policies, especially if you're trying to get warp done. This is actually the kind of time to start, you know, grinding darklings, get that prestige, unlock those warrants to finish up this video, right? So if you've enjoyed it and you want to give it your opinions on the Alliance skills, put a comment below, like always, guys, you know what I am doing. And until the next video, smash that like, comment, and subscribe and share this about to your Alliance members. Maybe they're not part of the channel and get them in part of this community. And until the next one, Stay safe, stay sneaky, peace out.